All right, so we have the top best God of War Ragnarok moments in the video. I'm really excited about this video. When I first saw it, I was like, yeah, we got to watch it. We got to watch it, bro. I have me. That boy Welcome Thor. Place. And today we're grabbing our popcorn and settling in. Bro, so Thor was definitely a MVP moments. of Ragnarok, bro. I love that Thor. It's sad. I'm, I'm sad that they killed him off, though. Ah, oh, man. It's a shame. <clears throat> Spoilers ahead. Sorry if I have a cough. Of God of War Ragnarok. You've been warned. Yes, there are spoilers. So if you guys haven't played the game yet, you don't want to see any spoilers. Uh, play the game, then come back. Shout out to Top Mojo Plays. Oh my god. This game was amazing, bro. Honestly, so amazing. In the lead up to Ragnarok's release... Many wondered how the latest entry in the God of War series would compare to the open landscape of Elden Ring. Well, as it turns out, it was by including Elden Ring within God of War Ragnarok. While attempting to rescue Björger, Kratos and Atreus are presented with a sprawling biome full of various environments, puzzles, enemies, and numerous side quests, many of which provide important backstory for beloved characters that are not only completely optional, but also entirely missable. For the time being, the crater might be the closest we ever come to a truly open world God of War game. But if this is the effort the team at Santa Monica Studio is willing to put into an entirely optional area, we can't uh, even listen, imagine. Listen, I'll be real. I wasn't really too focused on like the open, the open worldness about it. I don't know if that's a word or not. Sorry, y'all. It's just, bro, the gameplay. I, I just, it was so fun to me, bro. I was never really worried about. Oh my God. Okay, the spear, bro. The spear. That weapon is hard, bro. <laughs> Sorry for my cough. Spear important for story reasons. It's also important for Kratos. The spear is the first weapon that wasn't just bestowed on Kratos. The blades were bound to him by Ares, and the axe was passed on by Faye. Yeah. The spear is the first weapon that was made just for him. His own blood was even used in its creation. The spear also marks an important moment in Kratos and Brock's relationship. In a moment when Brock is at his lowest, Kratos asks him to bless the spear, recounting Brock's words that it needs the blessing of a master blacksmith. It marks a major turning point for the pair's relationship of mutual respect and Kratos reminding Brock of his own words. It is the nature of a thing that matters, not its form. Gives Brock peace. Hey, if Kratos asks me to do anything, bro, I'm doing it at once. Strike true. May it be wielded with wisdom. May it be put down when its job is done. Meeting Ankraboda. Yeah, that's my boy uh, Trey's girlfriend. Well, it's not really his girlfriend, but we all know. Come on now. Atreus' search for his destiny and what the giants intended for him as Loki is one of the main driving factors for the young god in his quest for answers. After traveling through the Utengard, Atreus finds himself in Jotunheim, specifically the Ironwoods, and face to face with one of the last remaining giants in the realm. Angraboda instantly endears herself to not only Atreus, but also the player as well. With her sweet yet awkward demeanor, she has been alone for quite some time after all. Although she has many of the answers Atreus seeks, even though he may not like them, she makes it clear that their destinies are intertwined. Angraboda might not have a lot of time with Atreus outside of Jotunheim, but every time their paths cross, she's a welcome breath of fresh, optimistic air in a world clearly falling apart. I decided. It would be better if I wrote the ending myself. Freya's freedom. Oh, that's nice, man. I like the relationship. It was nice. For the moment. Friendship. Sorry. Friendship. More used to me. Hey, bro, Freya was on demon time. His rage towards Kratos is completely understandable given he is responsible for her son's death. No, but her son tried to kill me, though. Kratos, understanding of this pain, refuses to fight her despite her numerous attempts on his life. 
When a temporary truce is called, he tried to fight me. Odin's control and allow her to once again move between the realms. This but she came through at the end, though. For the two to mend their broken relationship. Freya, overcome with the relief of finally breaking free of Odin once and for all, puts her quest for revenge on pause and instead decides that while she cannot forgive Kratos, nor does she truly want him dead, they will remain allies until Odin's blight on the realms is cleansed. And in this moment, you can feel the weight lifted from both Kratos and Freya as they slowly begin to mend what was broken. Everything that's happened between us. No need to explain. Not to me. Bro, he tried to kill me. Yeah, these were these were tough. These were these dreams. I mean. Faye's influence over the events of I, would, I mean, I would say like they're kind of like nightmares, bro. She had seen the entirety of Kratos and Atreus' journey through Midgard and set them on the path foretold by the giants, and her presence was felt throughout the entirety of their adventure. This is why it was such a shock to find her visiting Kratos in his dreams. But look at this, bro. Him even from beyond the veil with his memories of their time together. Every time he dreams of her, she guides him through the difficult decisions he's faced with Atreus and their friends, eventually teaching him that closing yourself off to the world does more harm than good, and only by opening your heart to those around you. Okay, maybe they're not nightmares, but like, bro, I can't lie. Like, imagine you sleep and you see like your dead partner, bro. Asgard. Would that be like a? What? This guy was so annoying. This guy was so annoying, bro. Visitors must be. Oh, he was so annoying. We knew with Ragnarok on the horizon, we eventually would end up at Asgard's doorstep. But we never could have predicted we'd visit before the end of the world, let alone for it to be so accommodating. After an initial scuff up, Atreus is seemingly welcomed with open arms by not only And I, and I was still let in, bum. And I was still as Thor's daughter. Seeing the many Aesir in their home dealing with normal mortal family problems was a refreshing inside look versus the outright. Bro, this man Thor was dead drunk, bro. Odin's openness and acceptance of Atreus had us cautious in the beginning, but slowly we began to question if everything we thought we knew about the Allfather was actually true. Credit to the writers for getting players to let their guards down just as Atreus did. And on that young man. This man Odin's a straight menace. The sit down. This is intense. I like this. This is my this is honestly my favorite part. I love this, bro. <laughs> well, many anticipated the beginning of the game would see Thor arriving at Kratos' this, Bro, this game started off with a bang, bro. At the end of the 2018 game, no one could have predicted just how civil things would begin. After Thor offers the pair a drink, the already tension-filled sit-down is further amplified by the arrival of the Allfather himself. In a scene straight out of a Tarantino movie, the tension reaches a breaking point as Odin discusses how he wants nothing more than peace between them so long as Kratos stays out of their way, to which Kratos, no longer willing to do the bidding of any god, immediately declines. So what do you say? No. Hands up. <laughs> no. The entire scene works so well because it keeps not only Kratos and Atreus on the edge of their seats. No, buddy. What did he thought? He thought exactly what he thought he was about to follow the rules? Nah, it's not us. Greatest form of manipulation. There were some misunderstandings. Regrettable one. But I think we all have a better idea of who we're dealing with. Sindri's grief. Hey, oh man. I'm talking to you. <clears throat> you never shut up. Brock. For the things, Odin. While Brock's untimely death hit all of us hard, no one more affected than Sindri. His devotion. Sindri was he was straight. He was depressed, bro. <clears throat> he was depressed. He was he was depressed, man. Four pieces of Brock's soul, which leads to even more heartbreak when Lemire explains that without a complete soul, 
There is no afterlife. And Brock is simply gone. Dang, man. Existence. In his anger and grief over the loss of Brock, Sindri turns on Kratos and Atreus, blaming them for Brock's death after he welcomed them into his home. That's understandable. Normally, <laughs> covered in blood and without his precious gloves, proves just how much Brock meant to him. Even after exacting his revenge against Odin, Sindri is still unable to let go of his anger and seeing the normally cheerful, paranoid dwarf now a shell of his former self is just as heartbreaking as losing Brock. A hole. What? Gets bigger the more you take away. Ragnarok. <sighs> True, man. I mean, I felt bad for him, bro. He he was really like the. He he was really down, bro. When the subtitle of your game is describing the end of the nine realms, you better believe that it needs to deliver. And with the assault on Asgard, Santa Monica Studios more than fulfilled that promise. Landing in the middle of a battle already begun, the ascent to the walls of Asgard. Bro. All the skills Kratos and Atreus. They did such an amazing job, bro. They did a really, really, really amazing job with this, bro. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all, for like my throat and my cough. Sorry, y'all. Battle, keep the momentum going and feel profoundly epic in scope. The culmination of everyone's journey to this exact. I like this when they all teamed up. I love, I love that. Kratos and Thor, and the eventual fall of Odin, deliver some of the most satisfying moments not only in God of War Ragnarok, but in all of gaming. Time to go. Go where exactly? You didn't exit. Ow. Let's try it, stuff. The parting of ways. Yep. We forged our own path because of her. For as bombastic as the assault of Asgard was, by far one of the most important and emotional moments was also one of its most subdued. After everyone returns to Midgard, Atreus finds Kratos waiting for him, and the pair are led by Angraboda to another Keeper's Shrine that Fae had hidden from the rest of the giants that was far more hopeful for both of them. Atreus explains to Kratos that he feels his destiny is now to find the remaining giants, and although Kratos has spent the entirety of their journey trying to keep Atreus close and safe, he knows this is what his son needs and allows him to forge his own path. Loki will go. Atreus. Atreus remains. After saying goodbye, Kratos finds a separate prophecy meant just for him, and in a beautiful display of how much she truly loved this once vengeful god of war, Faye shows Kratos a future he never could have imagined for himself. We're not crying, you're crying. I'm not. What now? There is much to do. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips. Wow, from man. Plays. And be sure to subscribe <sighs> to, to be notified. Wow. That, hey, listen. Well, here, here's the question. I, you know, listen, I played God of War since I was a little kid, right? It's just, it's crazy. First of all, it was crazy that he even had a son. We already knew Kratos had a daughter, you know, but then, you know, the whole mishap happened back then. Then, then he had a son, right? And then now, you know, his son is going out on his own journey, right? And so now... For the next God of War game, because there's going to be a next God of War. There's going to be a next God of War game, you know. Um, I would assume that Atreus would be the main character of God of War. That's what I would assume. I would assume that Atreus would be the, the protagonist, you know. And I feel like they would sit Kratos down. If that makes sense, they would, you know, just put him somewhere. They might show us a cutscene or, or or two about what he's doing. Or I feel like uh, Kratos might come through and help out Atreus, you know, if he needs some help, you know, later in the story. That's what I feel like, you know. Um, but yeah, it, I, y'all, it's about that time, man. I think it's about that time to where you know, 
our goat, you know, our 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 ghost of 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 Spartan, our our <laughs> our goat. It's about time that our goat sits down, bro. He's getting old. <laughs> hey, listen, but that that happens though, you know. You know, he's getting old, and I feel like it, it's it's a Trey's turn to step up. And um, I mean, we'll see. We'll see how they make Atreus and how they form him and how, and how they mold him into something. Because obviously, he's he's not going to be the same as Kratos. You know, he's way different, way different. You know, so we're gonna see how they make him, uh, how they you know tr transform him into. Um, I mean, and I feel like, and I think. Whenever the next God of War game comes out, he might be like a like an early like adult. He might be like 20, 21, 22. He might be in that range because in uh in Ragnarok, he was like a older teenager. I would say he's like he, I wouldn't say he was an adult yet, but he was like a teenager. He was probably like 16, 17, 18. He was in that range, right? But when we see him again, he's probably going to be an adult, and that's when God of War is going to take over right there. So I mean, we'll see. It's been it's been a long it's been a long 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 time since I've been since I've been playing God of War, and um, I enjoyed every single second of it. And um, yeah, man, comment down below, man. What's your favorite God of War game? Uh, I would say that my favorite God of War game is God of War Three. That's my favorite God of War game ever. I was literally like, I was raging, bro. Like I remember I raged so hard that I was biting my PS3 controller. <laughs> yes, bro. I was biting. I was I was so mad, right? I was legit, like like a Tasmanian devil. I was biting. My, <laughs> I was, bro. But um, but yeah, man. At the end of the day, I mean, it, it is what it is. So comment down below. What's your favorite God of War game? I'll see you guys later for next time. I'm out and.